The addition of the warehouse to workshops is more powerful than you realize. Prior to warehouses, workshops would buy input from the trader, generate a new item, and sell it to the trader. This was fine. This is how workshops would generate revenue that would end up in your pocket. Remember, during early access, after each patch, Flesson would spend dozens of hours testing to determine which shops, on average, worked best in each town. This is how we ran workshops forever. Now, with warehouses, we can divert all the produced items into the warehouse, where only you, the owner of the shop, can access them. You can also set the shop to use inputs from the warehouse. Now you can go somewhere to get the cheapest inputs, dump them in the warehouse, grab the outputs, and take them with you to sell for more money than the current town would sell them for. Doing this, the shop won't sell the items to the trader for this town's price. Yeah, so what? We know how this works. How is this more powerful than you realize? The input items vary in price. That price depends on a few factors, like where you are in the world, village production nearby, prosperity of the town, whether caravans are visiting the town, wars, market saturation, and so on. One thing is always true. The input can always be found cheaper than the output. This makes sense. How can you make money if it wasn't true? If you take the quantity of the input times the value of the input, then add the cost of running the shop, you get the cost of making the output, which is typically more than one unit. The difference between the cost of making the output and the price you sell it for is commonly known as the margin. The higher the margin, the higher the profit. Simple? Good. We want to choose an output that has a high value and also has a cheap input. My mind immediately went to silver and jewelry. Silver is 100 or less in a good location, and jewelry sells for 300 or more in a good location. The workshop uses one silver to produce two jewelry and costs 100 to run the shop for a day. So 600 minus 200 is 400 profit per day, if you micromanage it. I'm not talking about the workshop profits, although it should be similar. I'm talking about you scouring the globe for the cheapest silver, then finding the best place to sell the jewelry. Basically, stretching this margin as wide as possible. One nuance is the conversion rate for silver is 0.75. This means it generates output three out of four days. Basically, there are days when the shop doesn't run and you don't get any output. That happens once every fourth day. You'll see the workshop is halted. I ran several tests. My objectives. I set the workshop to only use the input from the warehouse and divert all output to the warehouse. That way I controlled everything. I only bought silver when it was less than 100 and at first only sold jewelry above 400. Later I adjusted that as the market got saturated with jewelry. I used smithing to make money to buy the workshop and designed the character's backstory to help with that. I hunted looters and smith until I could afford a workshop. On summer 9, 1084, I bought the silversmith in Carbon Seth. Well, I bought a workshop and converted it to a silversmith. This was the first of my five tests where Carbon Seth didn't have a silversmith. This will add another 2,000 to the cost. On the positive side, it's one less silversmith in the world which means the selling price should be good, as we'll see. I kept a running tally of expenses and income to determine when the workshop is paid off and becomes profitable, which was the original idea for this video. It was going to be a 100-day challenge. How quickly can you recoup the workshop investment? By the way, the four previous runs at this were all done in less than 67 days, the fastest being 55 days. I didn't record any of those, but if you want to see a speedrun for this, let me know in the comments. All of the silver I bought was added to the expenses. The only income I counted was selling the jewelry. On winter 18, 1084, the workshop was paid off. No more waiting years for the shop to start to turn a profit. 
So what's happening here? Why is this better than just letting it run? With the typical workshop, they would buy input from the trader and sell the output to the trader. This means that the town's demand plays a big role in your workshop profits. By using the warehouse, you remove the town's demand from the equation. You will go and find the best deal on the input and the output. This makes the workshop way more profitable. This is why warehouses are more powerful than you realize. But it gets even better. The workshop has a pool of money, current capital, that it draws from to pay for operations. Because you're instructing the shop to store the output and not sell it, that pool of money is constantly being depleted. Your next thought is the same as mine. What happens when that capital reaches zero? Good question. We may never know. Seriously. In my testing, it stops at 5,000 as long as I had input in the warehouse. It would still produce output from the input, but the cost of running the shop is free. Free? Just kidding. It only appears that way. The worker's wages come out of your pocket instead of the workshop capital. If you don't have enough to pay the wages, then the shop will take the wages from the workshop capital, dropping it below 5000 If you run out of inputs, then the shop will buy from the trader, reducing the capital. If the shop has to buy input from the trader, it will reduce the capital below 5000 What happens when it reaches zero then? I don't know. Once the capital is too low to buy from the trader, the shop is halted. I did spend some time trying to manipulate the price of the inputs at the trader to match exactly current capital, but I gave up after numerous tries. I think the caravans were trolling me. But this doesn't matter, since we're going to keep the warehouse stocked with the cheapest input we can find. And as long as we have money in our pockets, the workshop will never go bankrupt. Watch for a future video where I make a trade route using this strategy. Which shops will this work for? Is the next question. Pottery shops work nicely. It takes one clay worth 20 or less and produces two pottery worth 100 or more. This shop has an added bonus of running twice a day because it has a conversion rate of two. So workers get their 100 plus two clay at 20 each is 140 and the output is four pottery worth 100 or more each. Linen weaveries can be used. They also run twice a day. They take one flax worth less than 10 and turn it into two linen worth 120 each in a more stabilized market. Early on, the prices for linen are absurdly high. And if you can get a workshop that early in the game, you can make a killing. But a more typical scenario is 120 for the input and 480 for the output, which is still very good. Velvet weaveries. They run like the silversmith and only produce three out of four days. The input is silk and can be obtained for 20 or less and outputs two velvet selling for 200 or more. So 120 input and 400 output. This works with tanneries that take one hide worth 30 or less and turn it into two leathers worth 100 or more. So 130 to make and sell for 200. Sadly, wood workshops only put tools in the warehouse. You don't get bows, arrows, shields, and such that it actually creates. There is a tiny margin. Wood can be found at 10 or less, and the shop will produce two tools. If you can find a place to sell them for at least 55, you can break even. The smithy is the same as the wood shop, as it only puts tools in the warehouse not the armor and swords it actually creates. The big difference is it takes one iron ore worth 50 or less and turns it into four tools worth 50 or more. So with workers wages, 150 input and 200 output. Wool weaveries output garments. And since you don't get any of those goodies in your warehouse, these workshops are losers that can't be used for this strategy. Breweries, wine presses, and olive presses could work. They all run more than once a day, but the low margins means you would have to carry a lot more 
to make good money. Using this micromanagement style makes the shops more profitable. Pair this with a monopoly on a workshop type and it will be even more lucrative. I'll be working on another video where I tweak the workshop XML and have some fun. So look for that video. If you like this video, click the like button. If you haven't yet subscribed, click that button. Here are some other videos you may enjoy. Thanks for watching. Peace out.